Hi and thank you for watching. It has been a minute since I've done a video like this, but I just wanted to get ready for the day and film it and share with you. So I recently posted a vlog from Phoenix and I just wanted to talk about it and give you some behind the scenes information station. The makeup is not new, but hopefully it's still fun to watch because I don't know, it feels like we're getting ready together. Have this video on while you're getting ready or just sit and watch whatever you like to do. I really appreciate Appreciate you clicking onto this and I'll give you an update on what happened in Phoenix. Good morning. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening wherever you are whatever part of your day you're in I hope it's good I probably explained everything in the intro already so I'm gonna start off just jumping into it these are my lumify eye drops and I'm going to just put these on they make such a big difference I cannot stand when my eyes get red from being on the computer. This is how I make up prep. Um, this is Hawaiian Tropic sunscreen. I just wanted to apply this to my face. How have you been? It has been a minute since I've done a video like this. I just don't have any new products to showcase. I don't have any new techniques. I've just been doing this. Caramex, Carmex, whatever. Apply this to my lips. These videos are always interesting because they're half tutorially. Usually I just like to focus on the makeup for a bit. Once I get my eyes on, then I'll start talking. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer in 1.5 and it's a pretty messy applicator so I just take whatever's on the screwy part and I just use that as my eyeshadow primer. It cleans up the applicator as well as gives me the perfect amount of product to prime my eyes. The genius of it all. I'm taking this Hourglass 14 brush and I'm going to use this MAC palette, either cream or emphasize. I'm running out. This is a very well-loved palette. I have another one, but I kind of just want to use this all up before I use the new one. I always get stressed out when I'm at the end of my palette because I want to get my money's worth and then also I don't use all these colors in here. I don't know if MAC still sells individual pans. I used to purchase Emphasize by itself all the time, but this I just purchased at Nordstrom. I think it's still available. So my eyes are primed. I have Sigma brushes. This is the E40, and then this is the E25. The number is like wiped off, but I have these two. Sometimes I go in first with the fluffier brush. Sometimes I go in first with a little bit more concentrated brush. It depends on my mood, I guess. Today we'll start with this one and then just blend out with the tapered after. This is MAC Wedge. And I just apply this. I try to hold the handle further down just to give a lighter application of color. And I just go in in like a little bit of a circular motion. I like to have my eye open. You can close it, of course. But this, I like to concentrate on the crease. And then when I have the E40, I just blend it out through the transition area so there are no harsh lines. You've seen this all before. Do people still do makeup tutorials? I don't really watch makeup tutorials as much. I used to watch them a lot, but maybe it's still there, but I'm just not hip to it. But I didn't love when new palettes were coming out every week and they all kind of look the same after a while. Plus, I don't like to play with color. So once I find a good group of neutrals, I'm fine. Then I just smoke this out. You can put more product on your brush if you like, if you're like me, and you like that really heavy makeup look. This is how I do my makeup every day. Just full, full glam. Even if I decide later on today that I'm not going anywhere, this is just how I like to start my mornings. I'm taking a shorter handled same brush, Sigma E25. Obviously I use this with a dark brown shade. This is MAC Espresso. And I just stamp this into the outer corner to create some depth. And trust me, once I get the eyeshadow on, then I'll just start talking. This, I think with every time I film, when I'm doing the eyes, I just only talk about the makeup part of it. As I apply more product to the eyes, the way that I blend it out is just doing the previous step. So now that I have that on, I don't always add more to the brush, but I just use the brush that I used 
And the last step to smoke out that dark brown, just blend everything out. It's your best bet. If you get to a point of blending where you don't have the saturation of the last color you applied, well good, that means you definitely don't have harsh lines and then you can just reapply to your heart's content and just build it up. Now I'm gonna apply my eyeliner. This is the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. And eyeliner was the first thing I ever learned. When I was in middle school and I knew I wanted to be a makeup girly, that was the first thing I ever practiced was eyeliner. I'm taking this little, little dome-shaped brush in MAC Carbon and I'm just gonna stamp this right on the outer corner in a very small controlled area, but we will smoke it out. I just love what this does. I think it lifts the eye, it creates depth, just really gives you that like I heard this thing that said there are like four kinds of pretty that a woman can be. It's either fox pretty, cat pretty, rabbit pretty, or deer pretty. I don't know what the difference between fox and cat would be though. Might as well do my lashes too. I don't know if this is weird, but I like to do my hair before I do my face makeup because I just don't want the face framers touching my face and then ruining the makeup. So rather, I would just do my hair first. This is like pretty much my natural texture of my hair, but I like it just to be pin straight. So now I feel more available to talk to you. I hope that you've been having a really great 2024 so far. Usually when I go to Phoenix, I get so jazzed about it that I plan my next trip while I'm still on the trip. So I planned this Phoenix trip months ago. I think it was on my birthday. November, I think that I had the best swing of my life. I was just loving golf. I was scoring low. Like if I plateau at this skill level, for a year, I'll be happy. I just wanna shoot 90s golf. I was playing a lot of just nine hole rounds because it's winter and there's just not as much sunlight. I'm not whining, I'm just filling you in on the current events of my life. So in December, my neighbor, their pipe burst. The people above me and not directly above but like above to the side so what happened was they ruined my next door neighbor's unit at this condo and they had to just gut their whole entire unit it was heartbreaking and my unit got wet not from the unit above but because the one beside me was flooding so much it was really bad and so my walls like my floors were wet all along one side of my home and they had to put dehumidifiers in here and they were so loud and they were in here for about a month. There were definitely positive takeaways from it. It was water, not fire. Could have been a lot worse. My dog is okay. He was not hurt or anything like that. And I had some water damage from a different unit last year. Being an adult, is hard. For the second year in a row, I had water damage in my unit in December, but this one just, it was kind of stressful because people had to come in almost every day and just take measurements of this dehumidifier. And okay, what are you supposed to do when people come into your home? What are you, where are you supposed to say it? What are you supposed to do? Like they would take the measurements and I didn't know if I was supposed to go in the rooms with them. It's not a big place. So I just kind of awkwardly stand there because like, I don't know if they had questions or something like what am I supposed to do so I just tried to make myself available every day they would give me these huge time frames of when they could be here it was just uh, all seconds of the day I was just kind of waiting for the next visit so it was kind of stressful and then they thought that they might have to cut into my walls and just do major construction so I was getting pretty stressed out even just thinking about it like <sighs> it was so 
freezing. I think I kept saying that it was 5. It wasn't 5, it was 20. But the weather app said that it was 20 but felt like 10. I don't know if there's a science to that, like how you can make the weather feel like it's something else. Once you get to a certain temperature, it's just cold. Like I, I wouldn't have argued that the 20 felt like 10. I would say cold is cold. And I know that that happened all over the country. So I'm not trying to whine like it just happened just to me, but it was very cold. So golf just got a lot less fun when it was 20 and I'd still go maybe at 20 degrees. I don't know, the ground would be hard or something. No, the ground was so muddy. So there was mud everywhere and your ball just doesn't travel and I got mud all over everything everything got muddy some mud puddles would leave your shoes clear when you walked out of them some you just look like you stepped in chocolate pudding and it was just cold and I think that I ruined my swing from just continuing to go out because I was either tense or just bundled up so much that I couldn't swing through so I was getting pretty grumpy in December and really looking forward to my vacation in January but then the airline was canceling a lot of flights from where I was going and I was kind of getting worried there was a really high chance that my flight was going to get canceled and at this point I was like okay I need this vacation at this point the people stopped coming in and thank god they didn't have to cut my wall or anything but I just really wanted to get away for a minute and just be in the warmth be in the sunlight so I look at my flight and it's canceled I only just started vacationing last year when I got into golf, but I was so eager for this vacation. So they revised my itinerary and they redirected me to a different airport and just it just changed the vibe of the whole trip. It just was such an inconvenience. And I kind of was even considering just canceling or postponing this trip, but I didn't want to, I really wanted to go. I'm getting ready to go, cameraman gets sick and he's a good sport about it but I just felt so bad. And then when we're getting ready to go, I look at the weather and it's rain in Phoenix. Like I didn't even know it rained in Phoenix. So that was something different. I wasn't expecting the weather to be so warm. It's January, but I was not expecting rain and there was rain for a lot of days in a row. The temperature was literally the same here as it was in Phoenix when I went. And I was excited to get away. When you're looking so forward to a vacation and this is how it's ending up, it was just unfortunate. So looking at the bright side of things, I mean, I did go on a random weekday in January. So I thought, you know, I'll have the courses to myself. It'll be so great. And then I can get a lot of golf content and work on my swing. Well, my first tee time, there still was someone on my tee time, which I thought was so crazy. And the golf course was pretty busy. I didn't get to vlog. I don't know if I'm being unrealistic. I can't stand when people are on my tee time. It's not like I'm booking on weekends after work or something like those understandably would be busy and I'm not booking in like the best times of the day or the year even but I can't for the life of me get a tea time by myself. That one could just be me. I could be in the wrong on that one, but I was very bummed to not even get to golf by myself. And so I didn't really get to vlog and I definitely didn't really get to work on my swing because when I'm with people, I always feel very rushed and I definitely cannot putt if I'm not alone. I play from further up when my playing partner can just do a drive, take a mulligan, do whatever they want. If they take too much time, I already start to feel rushed. So by the time I get to my tee box, like I just kind of hit as fast as I can. And I don't know, I kind of spoil the experience for myself because golf is not cheap and travel is not cheap. So I need to be better at making the best out of a situation. I basically just kind of felt rushed the whole time. And I don't know if you're like this, but do you ever feel like you have to be on if you're in a social situation? I put so much pressure on myself socially that like I kick it up and I just go above my comfort level. Just being a pleasant person to be around. I hope that the case isn't that I'm not a pleasant person, but I just try really hard to make a situation like happy and nice for people. I never want to be argumentative. I never want to be a burden. So I always try to be really nice and I put on, like I used to work in a coffee shop and that way of like speaking to your customers, that's how I talk in any social situation. So I'm like, hi, how are you? Like just really out of my comfort level as far as extroversion goes. I'm such an introvert. I was pretty worn out by the end of that round and just bummed, I guess. 
And so the next day I had a tea time at a different place. The weather was showing so much rain. I was trying to find the silver lining and I thought, okay, well, if I'm by myself, then I can film, and I don't mind being in the rain. I live here, so it's rainy all the time. I film in the rain, I golf in the rain. It's not that big a deal. It's pouring rain though, like pouring, pouring. And the weather said that it was going to stop raining right before my tea time. The downpour was ridiculous. You wouldn't be able to golf in that. So I ended up canceling my tea time that I've been waiting months to go play. Even just driving past the course when I was leaving, there was so much standing water all over the fairways that it wouldn't have even been fun to golf. I ended up going to a cheaper golf course just to try, but it's not as fun when there's just ponds all over the fairway. It was honestly, it was a bummer and I filmed and vlogged and I tried to stay really positive, but I was so bummed. This was my vacation that I was so looking forward to and I really don't mean to whine about it, but I just was so excited to get away and be in Arizona and golf. Just a lot of stuff was going on. There were definitely positive takeaways from the trip. I'm not saying it was a bust and I really don't want to sound ungrateful. I have the opportunity to travel, which is great. It's very much a blessing. But with that being said, there were so many positive takeaways from the trip too. First of all, I think I mentioned this a bunch of times because it's really important to me. If I don't mention it, then it probably didn't happen. The landing of the plane to and from both were phenomenal. I love smooth landings on airplanes. Feels like it's like the start to your vacation and I just love it. It just feels so safe, it feels so good. So I was really happy about the, <laughs> plus the landing, like I was safe. I'm happy to have made it there safely. Everything was safe, so that's great. Definitely not something to take lightly or take advantage of. I, I got there safe. I'm safe now, it was a good trip. And then of course, the highlight of my trip was meeting Kyle Mays. He's on YouTube and Instagram. His username is Cart Barn Guys. He is such a solid golfer and a great content creator. His video editing skills, like his content is so good. You know, you don't really realize when people are on the internet doing a hobby, that if they're on the internet, they have two skill sets because they have their original hobby, whether it's golf or cooking or whatever, but then also editing videos is not easy to do. And to film good content and edit it, whether it's Instagram and picking the music and just getting your attention grabbing clip or if it's long form like on YouTube, there's a lot that goes into it. And I'm not good at it, but I can really appreciate great editing in videos. So so I really like Cart Barn Guys and I got to meet him, which was great. And it was just so cool. I've just been a fan of his for a while now, since I've been into golf basically. And so I saw him, that was great. I got to golf at Papago, which is so fun. I didn't get to golf at Lookout Mountain, but I did go to Encanto, just like the little public course. I did both Encanto 9 and 18. That's what I look forward to. I did really well at Encanto 9, actually. Like, I don't give myself enough credit. I'm just focused too much on the score. There are some par fours on it, though, but I don't know what par is. I don't golf to get a certain handicap. Like, honestly, after this trip, my handicap went up. Of course, I got to eat in and out which is so fun. Oh, and the hotel that I stayed at, it was a new hotel, and I liked it a lot better. It had a kitchen, so I purchased groceries because there was um, like a refrigerator, and I had in and out every day, which is my favorite. There was a lot of good that came on this trip. Also, I went to Lululemon, which was really fun. It was like some shopping district, and I was not dressed up. I didn't bring enough clothing, to be honest, so I went to Lululemon, and that was really fun. The employees there were all super nice. Uh, I usually shop online, so I purchased my first Lululemon item right before my trip, and the quality was just so good, so I liked being in the store and getting to feel things. Wow, they, their stuff is such good quality, and I don't know, I just kind of missed shopping. Maybe I should not shop online as often, and not only just try to buy the cheapest thing, like the quality was just so good, so I was really happy. I purchased the same shirt that I had, but in a different color, and this really nice hoodie. I'm like a big fan of Lululemon now, maybe because I'm more into 
like sport stuff. I want nothing to do with Seattle. So when I fly out of SeaTac, I didn't wear anything cute. Just that area doesn't feel clean. It doesn't feel glam. So I didn't love my airport outfits to or from. As I was getting more bummed about the events of this trip, I just didn't even pack with as much thought as I usually do. I'd mentioned it a lot in my other videos, but I gained some weight. So I was not super excited about my body either. That's just myself being silly. I read this thing that there was this girl and she would take a picture of herself every day and then give herself a rating, one through 10. And the ratings were so drastic but she looked the same in every photo. And I think that's how I feel. I don't know if I even felt that bad about how I looked or if I just felt bad about what was going on. And then that was just how I was taking it out. <laughs> I forgot I had somewhere to be. I got a few minutes. Usually I would have left by now, but we can wait. It's not an appointment or anything like that. I'm not late. I just like to be early to things. But yeah, I just wanted to explain what happened in Phoenix. I think that my whole vlog, I was being like, not fake nice, but just trying to make the best of it for your sake to be entertained by the content and mine to not feel like I just wasted all this time and money and effort on a trip that just didn't really go that well. I had a nice time, it was fine, and I, really want to go back. As I was leaving Phoenix at the airport, I saw the beams of sunlight. I know that it's warm there now and inviting. So anytime I go again, I doubt that it'll be rainy or 50. I want to go back. I heard that it's really windy if you go in April. I mean, it's definitely going to be too hot to go in the summer. So I've got to figure something out soon. So this is the finished look. I think, how am I doing? So this is the finished look. I am off. Thank you so much for listening to me. I really appreciate you lending an ear. I hope it didn't come off like I was whining. This part is tough because I have an upturned nose and you can always see the powder. Do you see how much setting powder I just applied on my face? I just wanted to give a little bit of backstory and talk about the things that I omitted from the vlog so that you were in the know. So yeah, now you know and it'll get better, trust me. Thank you for watching that video. Thank you for watching this video. I will keep you posted on all things glam, golf. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.